I'm building that. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. I recently received Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes in the mail. And when I was first flipping through it, there was two things that jumped out at me. The first thing is that this is probably the first time a Wizards of the Coast bestiary has contained so many cool, evil, creepy, dark, twisted monsters that were really up my alley and the type of things that I like to use in my game. So I was impressed with that. The second thing that jumped out at me was a monster called the Cadaver Collector. And I know this is a monster that existed in previous editions, but I never played those editions, so it was new to me. And when I saw it, I knew it was something that I wanted to use in my game. In fact, it was something that I wanted to use in my next session. It would be perfect for what I was planning. So I checked to see if a miniature for it existed. And there was one, but I didn't really think it captured the same sort of cool vibe that the artwork in the tome did. And I didn't have time to wait to order a miniature, so I knew what I had to do. I had to build it myself. And I've never sculpted an original mini before. Yeah, I've made stuff like the rock golem, but that's just a big piece of foam. Sculpting an actual miniature, that's new to me. But I jumped in and I tried it, and I think I pulled it off pretty damn good. Actually, honestly, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So I'm gonna share with you today how I made my very own cadaver collector. Before we jump into the build, I wanna say thank you to Miniature Market for sponsoring this build. They are a one-stop shop for all your tabletop needs. They got miniatures, books, board games, everything you need. And actually they have the miniatures that I use to kit bash to do this project. So if you need to pick up any minis for your game, if you want to pick up the same ones I used for this build and try it for yourself, check out miniaturemarket.com slash blackmagiccraft so that they know I sent you. They got free shipping on all orders over $99 and really they just have a ridiculous amount of miniatures. So check them out. Now let's jump in and see how I made my very own custom cadaver collector miniature. I thought about a lot of different ways I could build an armature for this thing, and then I remembered that WizKids makes an Umber Hulk mini that is pretty much the exact same shape and size as this bad boy. So I went out and I picked one of those up, figuring I could probably hack it up and get it to look the part just fine. I knew that the legs had to be reversed so that this thing could have those weird backwards dinosaur legs, whatever those are called. There's a fancy word, I don't know what it is. So I set to work cutting off the legs and at first I tried a razor saw and that was a little bit slow and annoying. So then I switched to my Proxon rotary tool with a cutting blade and that made quick work of cutting off these limbs. I also cut off all the insecty bits from this guy's head. The artwork for this monster had kind of gears connecting the legs to the torso, so I wanted to mimic that. I didn't have any little gears, so I just found some beads that would work well enough. The way I had cut the legs off initially didn't let these beads sit nicely, so I had to hack up the torso a little bit more to get them sitting in the right position. To attach them, I drilled a hole right through the crotch of this bad boy, and I put in a small wooden dowel that I held in place with super glue, and then I slid the beads on to the dowel with some more super glue, making this connection really strong. I ended up cutting off the arms and the head just to get them out of my way because I knew I was going to be repositioning them or changing them anyway. I realized that if I took the Umber Hulk feet and flipped them upside down and turned them around, they would create a really nice thigh shape for this creature. But in order to have them sit nicely on those round beads, I had to take my rotary tool and a drum sanding bit and kind of sand out a sort of crescent shape so that it was a good fit for those beads. Once I had them fitting nicely, I used some five minute epoxy to bond them together. And while that epoxy was setting up, I used some poster tack 
to hold the legs in the position where I wanted them. After about 10 minutes when the epoxy was fully set up, I removed the poster tack and I was good to go. I created the lower portion of the legs using super glue lids with some toothpicks poked through them. I just drilled some holes in the legs and used some super glue and put them in place and it gave me this kind of interesting robotic chicken leg shape. Using my rotary tool, I cut the bottoms of those super glue lids so that they would sit flat in the position I wanted for this thing to be standing upright. I reattached both arms and I pinned those in place using super glue and toothpicks. I also added a sort of head substructure using a round bead and I pinned that in place using a wooden dowel. I didn't like how both arms were positioned, both of them being upright. I only wanted one like that. So I actually repositioned one of the arms using a heat gun. I heated up the plastic and bent it down to where I wanted it to sit and then I ran it under cold water and that stiffened up the plastic again and made it stay in the position I wanted it to be in. Now it was time to start sculpting the armor on this beast and I used green stuff because that's kind of the go-to for sculpting miniatures but to be honest I'm pretty inexperienced using it. I've only used it for small little pieces before, nothing to this magnitude so it was a big learning process. There was a lot of trial and error. I started by sculpting the kind of face cowl thing and that turned out pretty good. I used some glass beads for the eyes. I got these from Green Stuff World and I was pretty happy with the headpiece. And then I started layering on all the other parts and this is where things went good and some things went bad. And to be honest, I kind of re-sculpted things over and over and over again and just kept layering them on until I got it to a point I liked. I realized that one of the reasons I was having such a hard time is that I kept squishing my green stuff holding the figure. So I decided to attach him to a base. I used some milliput to kind of sculpt some ground and really hold him in better. I also sculpted some kind of hooven feet for him. I switched to milliput just because it's softer and a bit easier to work with than the green stuff. Now that I had a way to hold him, I continued sculpting his armor. And I realized that one of the mistakes I had been making was using the green stuff right after mixing it when it was still too soft and sticky. I realized that if I let it set up for about 15 to 20 minutes, it would stiffen up and be much easier to work with. At that point, I was able to more successfully build up the layers of armor on this thing and actually get it to a point where it started looking like the artwork. With the green stuff armor in place, I could start doing the really fun bits, which was adorning this thing with spiky bits and corpses. I used some arrow toothpicks and drilled through his hand and stuck them right through and I started piling on miniatures. I found this Bone Fiend mini from Reaper that was great because it was basically like a pile of skeletons that was almost the perfect shape to sit on his hunchback. I also grabbed some generic Reaper Bones skeleton warrior figures and I started hacking them up and placing them on the mini. In spots where I wanted them to kind of curve to the shape of the miniature, I used a heat gun to bend them into place. And then I just started super gluing them in. I also added a bunch of other random spiky bits like swords impaled and javelins using toothpicks. And in a lot of cases, I used a Dremel to drill a hole in and just stick it in place. I also ended up making a cool banner flag because I really liked that in the artwork. I just used a toothpick and some more green stuff to sculpt the actual fabric on the flag. Before moving on to paint, I really thoroughly washed this thing off because there could have been mold release on the bones figures or on the plastic arrows. And also I had been using some Vaseline to help me sculpt the green stuff. So I gave it a wash, dried it off, and then I primed it. Now there was a lot of different types of material going on in this model, so I really had to think about what was the best primer. In the end, I realized the Vallejo surface primer was probably my best bet, and I just brushed it on. 
For paint, I actually used a mixture of craft paints and actual miniature paints from Reaper. For the majority of this thing, I wanted a metallic, coppery, kind of brass look. So I just used some folk art metallic paint to give it a base coat. I find that this stuff actually covers better on a larger area than the more expensive miniature paint. So I brushed it out in the base color. I gave it some highlights in a lighter metallic. After that, I started moving on and painting out all the individual portions of this miniature, the bone and the armor, the shields, the swords and different metallic paints, the red cloth on the flag and on the miniatures. I didn't want all of these bodies to look like fresh skeletons. So for some of them, I actually used a red flesh wash on the bone color to make it look more like they were fairly fresh corpses. Whereas on the other skeletons, I used a black wash. I also used a black wash on the entire miniature to get in on all those little nooks and crannies and really dirty this thing up. You'll also notice that I painted on some kind of magical runes on this thing. I wanted some cool symbols, so I painted some in white and some in kind of a neon green. I also painted the eyes a glowing green because I really like that in the artwork in the Tome of Foes. Once I was content with my paint job, I sealed it all up using a Krylon Crystal Clear Matte Varnish. Overall, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. I struggled quite a bit through the sculpting process, which is why this wasn't so much of a step-by-step -step tutorial, but in the end, I got it to a point that it looks I think really cool and fairly true to the actual artwork in the tome. I know that this thing is actually gonna look pretty badass on my table. Wanna say thanks again to Miniature Market for sponsoring this build. If you're gonna pick up some minis, please use the miniaturemarket.com slash blackmagiccraft link to do so. If you need to pick up some of the miniatures used in this build, I will link to them on Miniature Market so you can grab those. If you need to pick up any other crafting supplies, check out my essential equipment store on blackmagiccraft.ca. If you love this video and the videos that I do for this community and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Those funds are what allow me to invest so much of my time into making these videos for the community. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. Even if you don't want to make your own version of the same miniature. I hope this video inspires you to just try your hand at miniature sculpting. If there's a monster you come across that you think is really cool and you can't find a mini for it, why not try making one yourself? If there's some minis in any of the bestiaries that you would like to see me try to make, put it in the comment section. I'll take a look and I might do it because I really enjoyed this and I have a feeling this will not be the last time I make my own custom miniature. Until next week guys, cheers and happy crafting.